Hey guys, I was doing some grocery shopping last weekend when I came across <laughs> this creepy looking thing. <laughs> this was the very last My Little Pony on the shelf. I'm not even kidding. This kid ran up to me after I grabbed it, but I just avoided eye contact. I might have even heard her sniffling when I walked away. Was probably just allergies though, I'm sure. I'm surprised it's so hard to find one of these My Little Ponies in store. I would order old ones online, but all the ones I can ever find are $10 plus shipping, which is already the price I can buy a new one at. This one though, Princess. Cadence. Was not an easy buy. The treasury was not happy about this. She actually cost me four whole extra dollars. <laughs> Really stretching my budget with this one. If you can find them cheaper anywhere, please do let me know. Maybe shoot me a link on Instagram. This is an SOS, the treasury needs your help. If you're a real one, make sure you watch the ads today. I need those four extra dollars back. So this is Princess Cadence of the My Little Pony world. I thought her head could turn, sorry. I'm sure you've already guessed. I'm doing another My Little Pony doll makeover. Apparently she's having the Best hair day. Not so sure about that. This whole box was a whole lot harder to open than I anticipated. It was a journey. She comes with a lot of hair accessories, so that'll be fun. I can't wait. It may look like I'm struggling, but actually this is exactly the look I was going for. Princess Cadence comes with these little twirly things. I wasn't entirely sure what they're supposed to do. I'm guessing they're for curling her hair, but I thought they could be multifunctional and be used as six feet distance barrier anten antennas. All of my arch enemies seem to have antennas. Anyways, here's her galactic space warrior hey. final form. She's clearly quite the looker. Honestly, kinda intimidating. I did lose a couple accessories here and there. No worries though, she has plenty more where that came from. Plus, shedding all that extra weight gave her the ability to fly. <laughs> Come on. Not for long though. My My Little Pony makeovers are inspired by Nerdy Crafters. She's done a few of these and I thought they turned out pretty cool. Before I get started, I had to take out all her accessories. <clears throat> it actually took me about a half hour to put them in, so it was kind of a little bittersweet, but I felt better after her new hairdo and I'm sure she did too. <laughs> The head was pretty tough to get off, but it was no match for me, of course. <laughs> it was actually a very stubborn head. It was being difficult later on as well. I gave her a very liberating look. <sighs> She's now a whole new horse. I wanted to give her a very close shave, but scissors can only do so much, so I had to bring in some backup. <laughs> These electric clippers really helped achieve the bald look Princess Candence wanted. It's actually kind of satisfying. And like always, I didn't forget about the butt hair. There's still a little bit coming out, but I had to let that slide. There's only so much I can do. Kind of looks like she's making a poop. There was quite a bit of hair. I ended up donating it to the trash butler. It was an emotional experience for both me and Princess Cadence. <laughs> Mostly for her, I moved on pretty quick. Some of you guys have been recommending I get a Dremel tool. To be honest, I didn't wanna. They're kinda expensive and I want to keep the stuff I do as simple to recreate as possible. I don't think you gotta get all crazy and stuff. 
The thing though is that the older My Little Ponies seem to be made of a softer material. Princess Cadence feels hard though. My scissors wouldn't have even made a dent. I've actually already lost the nail clipper scissors my grandma gave me to Pinkie Pie's nose. I should probably be using some real scissors, but I'm gonna just be using these little tiny ones from the nail clipper set my grandma gave me. So I didn't want to make the same mistakes twice. Princess Cadence isn't gonna get the best of me. My girlfriend suggested using our one and only knife, but there were obvious concerns about that, like how bloody things might get, and if I were to lose this knife, I would also lose my dinner. Just try to be quiet, okay? So the risks outweigh the reward in this situation. And so that's why I finally chose to invest in a Dremel tool. It came in pretty handy for cutting off Princess Cadence's giant solid ears and horn. Not sure how a knife would pull this off. I also gave her a rough sanding. Hopefully it'll help the paint and the epoxy stick better onto Princess Candace. Princess Cadence? <laughs> So then I mixed up some epoxy to get started on the sculpting. I'm using epoxy because it's air dry and that way you don't have to bake Princess Cadence in the oven. She's been through enough already. Princess Cadence was loving her new look so far, but I'm nowhere near done. You won't even recognize her once I'm done. So this is the beginnings of her entirely new face. I started off by covering up everything. I let her breathe through her nose for a little bit. Figured that was the least I can do, but eventually, we had to say goodbye. If you're new here and you've ever breathed through your nose before, you should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel and ringing that bell thing so you don't lose me on the internet. I post new videos every Friday. This one's her new nose job. I worked on it quite a bit, gave her nostrils and everything, even added some cheekbones and eye sockets, but things just weren't looking the way I wanted them to. I'm quite the perfectionist with my art. <laughs> So I decided to redo some stuff and start with a fresh base. Princess Cadence deserves better. May she rest in peace. These new and improved eye sockets might look a little higher up, but that's because they're not eye sockets at all. They're where the horns will go. I then went through and really fleshed out the character, brought in some of his facial features, such as his new nostrils and some bushy eyebrow plates, also some unamused mm. eyeballs. And keeping up with my obsession with blush, of course I added that too. I originally gave him some some really twirly horns. I thought they looked cool, but they didn't really look like him, didn't really fit his personality, <laughs> so I simplified them a bit. If you haven't guessed already, I'm working on recreating a dragon I drew in a Create This Book episode. This dragon was based on Smaug from The Hobbit. He's basically a big, red, scary dragon. I gave him quite a bit of spikes. I felt they were necessary. My recreation of him isn't really supposed to be that scary, more just a bored, done with boring, life kind boring, of experience. Boring, boring. I figure that since he's a dragon, he's scary in and of himself. He doesn't really need to prove anything to anyone and he's well aware of that. I'm gonna leave him here on this cup to dry while I work on his body. So here's Princess Cadence's headless body. In my opinion, she looked nothing like a horse to begin with. To me, she looked more like a unicorn dinosaur with oversized ears. Her body is pretty small compared to her head, even to begin with. I pretty much kept the proportions pretty similar. In the book, he's a little chubbier, but I kind of like the bobblehead proportions of the My Little Pony doll, so I just worked with that. I made her wings a little bigger though and made them more dragon-like. This is a dragon wing for those of you who are uncultured. They look a lot like bat wings, just more scaly. I thought about adding some veins to the wings, but ultimately decided against it. Sometimes simplicity is best. Or I guess with my work, it's always best. I decided he could use a belly. I went in and added some indents to it. I added a lot of horns and hooks and things to him. It was fun sculpting him, but it took a long, long time to paint all the little nooks and crannies. And I replaced her butt hair with an actual tail. It's also adorned in spikes, of course. Today's theme was spikes, I guess. I didn't want my dragon to have horse's hooves. That would be unacceptable. Even for me. So I decided to give him some claws. I sculpted the toes as best as I could. The My Little Pony's hooves are pretty close together. They're not really supposed to have toes on them. There wasn't much space on them, so I was just trying to make it work. I had to cover up the little hair on Princess Cadence's legs, so I just tried to sculpt over them and blend it together as much as possible. On these MLP dolls, it's never really a perfect blend. The transition between epoxy and plastic is always a bit noticeable, but it really doesn't bother me too much after I paint it. 
My dragon's mostly red, so I went in and painted everything in a red base coat. I had to build up a couple layers, layer upon layer, upon layer, upon layer, especially on the My Little Pony plastic parts. Painting this one took a while. Just like I mentioned earlier, the head was still giving me problems, so I decided to sand some bits of it here and there. Eventually, I was able to shove it back on, which was not an easy feat. Oh, there goes the horn. Oh, and its stomach. And then I had to hot glue all the casualties back on. Not too much of a disaster, so that's good at least. I accented some of him with a dark maroon red. His eyebrows, speckles, some spikes, and a bit of his wings and all that. He has little beady black eyes, so I kept those pretty simple. And also added some black to his nostrils. The white paint was the hardest to layer. It definitely took the longest. And there were a lot of little white white spikes and details that needed to be painted very, very carefully. It's hard to get the details to look clean. I usually have to go back in a couple times to try and clean it up. I feel like he looks pretty close to the original drawing, which I was really happy about, but there were still some little tweaks I needed to make. In the drawing, he had these black swirls going around his horns. I didn't paint those on initially because I thought it might end up looking sloppy. Instead, I went back in with some epoxy and sculpted those and then painted them to get a cleaner finish. Surprisingly, even with his big head, he was still able to stand up on his own feet, but I really liked the look of adding a base, so I gave him a base anyway. Instead of keeping the usual wooden look I used from my LOL dolls, I ended up giving him a black base to stand on. <coughs> so here's the original Princess Cadence. <coughs> and here's my red dragon. <coughs> <coughs> Haven't thought of a name for him yet. Although nameless, I do really love him. Do you want a close shave? Click on the top right or bottom left to avoid Princess Cadence's fate.